le vol intérieur qui relie Stockholm au petit aéroport de Luleå, dans le nord de la Suède, donne tout de suite la couleur. Vert. Très très vert. Les côtes déchiquetées de la mer Baltique s'offrent à moi pour la première fois. Et je me demande ce que le pays peut bien me réserver. Very rich, yeah, really. Some people do that. So that's my that's my new friend. That's one of Oscar's kids. Apparently, she wants to show me a room, but she doesn't speak a word of English, and I don't speak a word of Swedish. So it's, the communication is a bit hard. Tu dis quoi, André Wagen? Yeah. André Wagen, c'est quoi, André Wagen? Là bas. Comment est-ce que là? Ah, les mecs grillés. Mhm. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a là? Sans perdre de temps, nous faisons un tour rapide du petit village d'Ortlax. L'occasion de constater qu'effectivement, les barrières sont rares. Ortlax dispose également d'une usine de fabrication de papier, dont on aperçoit ici la cheminée. L'usine produit un excédent de chaleur, qui sert à chauffer les maisons à bas coût. Première randonnée au pays des trolls. La loi suédoise prévoit que quiconque peut librement se promener sur n'importe quel terrain, public ou privé, et même y camper librement. En pratique, personne ne le fait, car bien évidemment, le savoir-vivre l'interdit. You don't have the right to put fences on the land, yeah. on your private land, and everybody can walk in. Yeah. You can even put up a tent on everyone's land. A tent, you can yeah. camp on yeah. private land. As long as, long as it's not like, I think it's, uh, if it's not close to a house, so you yeah. disturb people, you can camp wherever you want. You okay. can put up a tent here, live for a week. Le seul véritable problème, les moustiques. Oh, les mosquitoes sont déjà un nightmare. Yep. Il y a des mosquitoes partout. Et je veux dire partout. Mosquitoes repellent. Oh, il y a des mosquitoes. Je ne peux pas croire combien de mosquitoes il y a ici. Il y a des mosquitoes. Il y a des mosquitoes. Il y a des mosquitoes. Et vous venez au début de l'hiver, ils se hachent. Oui. Juste maintenant. Donc, ça ne va pas aider. Vous devez bouger. Oui. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, here's the view. Hello, Sweden. So that's the city. Yeah, I can see smokes from the factory. Yeah, that's a factory. Okay, and you live by the lake. No, you live on the other side of the lake. Yeah. On the other side of the lake. Then you have the ski slope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you have big nothing. Oh, yeah, I can see the ski slope in the distance. So you're saying pretty much all of Sweden looks like this? With north of Sweden, yeah. Yeah, north of Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely reminds me of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> If we didn't have any wind, The mosquitoes will be able to come here. Yeah. Yeah. So the wind is, oh, yeah. the wind is great. If you have a little bit of wind, it, it's still annoying, but it's not unbearable. Can I go like that? Yeah. Why don't you take the camera? Why? 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 Ici, c'est un pays de chasseurs. Toutefois, seul le peuple des Sama, les Inuits de Scandinavie, sont autorisés à élever et à commercialiser la viande de renne. Mais plus encore que les paysages et la nature, il y a une chose que je suis spécialement venu voir dans ce Grand Nord. Voilà, il est 1h20 du matin. Et... Il fait jour. Il est 1h20 du matin et il fait complètement jour. Et c'est exactement ce que je suis venu voir en Suède. C'est pas pour rien que j'ai choisi le, le solstice d'été. C'est parce que pendant le solstice d'été, ils ont une période, ils ont une petite période de 10 jours à cheval sur le 21 juin où le soleil ne se couche pas vraiment, le soleil va venir sur l'horizon, presque se coucher, effleurer l'horizon, et puis repartir haut dans le ciel. Tout 
à l'heure, lors de cette première journée, il s'est passé un truc. On est allé faire 2-3 courses au supermarché. Et euh, au moment de vider le caddie sur le tapis, je commence à prendre les affaires, à les empiler sur le tapis. Oscar me dit « Ah non, 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 on fait pas comme ça, c'est pas comme ça. » Un petit peu irrité, on, on met tout en ligne, les uns après les autres. C'est très très important en Suède, c'est un code social. Pas jamais deux objets les uns côté des autres. En une seule ligne le long du tapis, avec les codes barres orientés vers la caissière. Ensuite, on va directement au petit terminal de paiement, on met sa carte bancaire immédiatement dans le terminal. On n'attend pas que tous les articles soient passés. Et une fois que le dernier article est passé, la caissière valide et le montant est débité de la carte. Comme ça, ça gagne du temps. Moi, je ne savais pas ça. Moi, j'attendais devant le terminal. J'avais ma carte dans la main, j'attendais que ce soit prêt. Puis comme c'est écrit en suédois, bah, je ne comprenais pas. Et Oscar passe à côté de moi, et puis d'un geste un peu nerveux, mais tu m'as vas-y, qu'est-ce que t'attends, vas-y, mets ta carte, t'as l'air d'un con. Il m'a expliqué tout ça, après il m'a fait, t'étais là à attendre avec ta carte comme un idiot. Il faut pas faire ça en Suède, c'est pas comme ça qu'on fait. Je me suis très vite aperçu qu'en Suède, ils ont beaucoup de codes sociaux. C'est comme ça qu'on fait, et pas autrement, et si tu fais autrement, t'es un emmerdeur, quoi, t'es un con. Donc j'ai parlé un petit peu haut en anglais, après je lui dis « Oh, excuse me, I'm a foreigner ». Donc là, dans ce cas-là, on est excusé, évidemment, on n'est pas d'ici, on ne connaît pas les codes, on ne sait pas qu'il faut faire comme ça, comme ça, on est excusé, c'est pas un problème. Il, il m'explique tout ça, il me dit oh, « Ouais, ouais, il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de choses comme ça ici en Suède ». Le 91e anniversaire de la grand-mère est pour moi l'occasion d'être présenté au reste de la famille. Et pour eux l'occasion de faire un fika. Le fika, c'est sacré en Suède. Ça consiste deux ou trois fois par jour à se réunir pour boire le café et manger quelques gâteaux. Ce fika est un peu spécial, car il célèbre un anniversaire et accueille un étranger. Aussi, une petite chanson traditionnelle est-elle de mise. What does she say? Yeah, daddy I'm good at sitting. She's good at sitting. <laughs> Piteo, la petite ville la plus proche, compte environ 22 000 habitants. C'est une bourgade tranquille de bord de mer. Très tranquille. This is Jeremy trying Swedish snooze. These are new ones? Yeah. It's a different kind than the last one we took. It looks used. Yeah, it's not. Okay, so you told me that Swedes don't smoke. Usually don't smoke, yeah, no. Usually don't smoke. Yeah. Instead of smoking, yeah. they use that, yeah. which I had never seen before. And they put it. Okay, I try that. Under the. In the mouth. Yeah. Under the lip, on top under of the, the gum. Lip, yeah. Yeah. Under the lip. Yeah. And it's nicotine and tobacco. It's nicotine and tobacco. And flavoring. And you told me it's like, stronger than cigarettes? Yeah. Three times stronger? I don't know if it's three or five or something, but it's yeah. a lot stronger. It's a lot stronger than yeah. cigarettes. But it's also a lot healthier than cigarettes. It's not healthier. Yeah, yeah. You can't get lung cancer, you don't get uh, coal, you don't get anything. It's okay. a lot healthier. Okay. So you just keep that yeah. under your lip yeah. and you wait. Yeah. And you get the nicotine and tobacco kick. So that's a snooze. Yeah. Swedish. So this yeah, the Swedish. And you can't export it to anywhere. Oh uh, yeah, you don't have the it's right only, to export. It's, no, it's, it's only Swedish. Only Swedish. <laughs> we got an exce exception from the EU to sell it. From the EU, EU government yeah. from yeah. Brussels. Yeah. We're currently driving to towards Oscar's parents. Yeah. And now, apparently we're going to the, like the real countryside. Yeah. Previously I thought that was the countryside, but now we're going to the real Swedish countryside. Le moins qu'on puisse dire, c'est que la Suède est peu peuplée. Avec 10 millions d'habitants pour 500 000 km2, le pays a une densité globale de 22 habitants au km2. Sachant que ceux-ci se regroupent principalement au sud dans les villes comme Stockholm, Göteborg ou Malmö, ça laisse de la place pour beaucoup beaucoup de forêts.
Les parents d'Oscar sont propriétaires d'un domaine qui compte 17 bâtiments, dont cette maison, vieille de 450 ans, aujourd'hui transformée en gîte d'été. À cette époque, le gouvernement suédois offrait des terrains à quiconque serait assez téméraire pour aller s'y installer. Aussi, les habitants ont-ils marché des centaines de kilomètres vers le nord à travers les forêts, avec sur le dos leurs poils en fond, accessoires indispensables pour ne pas mourir de froid pendant le long et noir hiver arctique. La pièce attenante abrite encore une cheminée en céramique. À cette époque, par moins 30 degrés en hiver, si le feu mourait, la famille mourait. Just picked a piece of newspaper from 19. This is from 1943. Yeah. Yeah. The West is helping. The West is helping Russia. This is so weird. France. France. Uh, Israelis rise when the Allies landed on the coast. Uh, Amsterdam. The stairs. Yep. They just they build the houses up. This house was. On the other place. Yeah, on the other side, yeah. on the other hill. Yeah, yeah, on the hill. All houses was burned down. Yeah. They burned down. Yeah, burned down. Burned down. But destroyed. Burned down. It's destroyed. Yeah, like an accident or something. Yeah. I don't know. A uh, blaze, something. Probably. Probably. Yeah. The family who lives, I, I think it was a very big family. Yeah. Ten child, yeah. twelve, fifteen. Yeah. I don't know. Where should they live? Yeah. They took the, this house. There. Oh, as a replacement for yeah. the burnt, burnt house. <gasps> yeah. Oh, they, they, they moved took it, it down, away. moved, no, and move. build it up yeah. here. They took it down. Yeah, and they moved the whole house. They took yeah, it down. Yeah, took it down. Oh, yeah, yeah, they didn't huh? carry it. Yeah. It's like our house burned down. Do you have a spare house or yeah. something? Yeah. That's why you had so many kids. Because there was you, you need you need kids to take care of you when you're old. Yeah. And yeah. if you have five yeah. kids, and yeah. none survive, yeah. and you need cool. workers, you need workers too. Mm -hmm. You need hands to carry the houses. Yeah, you need hands yeah. for the fields and yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a rough life. Oh yeah, it's, it's a real tough. Like we life. can't even start to imagine. No, it's not a supermarket to go to. Yeah. Food is really? out. Oh, we're out. We can eat pork. This place called Swid. Uh, it's the burned uh, yard. That's how you refresh the fields. Yeah, yeah, you burn it down. And you burn it down, ashes goes into soil. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, it, it, mm. When they came, it was only wood. Yeah. Yeah. So they cut the wood and they burned the, the yard. Yeah. yeah. Took away the stones, started yeah. farming. Yeah. And then they built up the houses. Le petit bâtiment voisin est une boulangerie encore en état de main. Yeah. You got So is this also 400 years old? I think it is maybe 200. 200 years old. Yes. So you can translate it for me. Yeah. There's going to be a way of doing it. Well. Milk, water, yeast, something, 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 <laughs> salt. So it could be spelt. It could be. Yeah, something like that. But I don't know the words in English. So you have like go here. You fire this up the night before. Yes. Yeah. Maybe 15 uh, hours before yeah. you yeah, start to break. Break. Voici un ancien stockage à grains, avec sa découpe de bois caractéristique de l'époque des pionniers. Le domaine réserve encore bien des surprises, comme l'ancien magasin d'articles de pêche du grand-père du père d'Oscar.
ou encore une véritable église. Oh, that's not your church. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, you have a church. Yeah, we had our baptism here for the kid. <coughs> Now it's for the stuff, but you move out the stuff, you have the church benches. So you went out yeah. in the fields and you went like this. Yeah, the for a kilometer. Sky to yeah, see. for a kilometer. But the, you know what? This is actually more efficient and faster than modern yeah, machines yeah, course, yeah. and stuff. Parmi les rares voisins, le restaurant Yos Garden. Hello. Hello. We have a search from uh, Switch. Yes. We think we should go for beer. We don't know if we're going to go. Water is 24. Okay. This yeah. is from the. Uh, this was built 1824. 1824. 1824. Yeah. And that log, the longest one there is 10 meters. 3, 4 years old. Oh yeah. Okay. Log. The log is 400 years old. Bien qu'isolé, le restaurant est souvent bondé, car sa cuisine est très réputée. Pourtant, les propriétaires ont un autre travail et ne s'occupent du restaurant que sur leur temps libre. Look everyone, this kid is nine years old and he can speak perfect English. I can't believe it. I can't believe how like everyone speaks English. But it's, you're too shy to, to speak English. I'm Jeremy. Germany. Yeah. La Suède, c'est un pays très athée. C'est un des pays les moins religieux du monde. Et pourtant, ils ont quand même quelques églises. Ils ont des églises comme celle-ci. Et ces églises, enfin, cette église-là est entourée de petits cottages, de petites maisons. Et ces petites maisons servaient à héberger les, les croyants qui venaient prier une fois par mois, donc ils venaient prier à cheval, ça leur prenait une journée pour venir prier, et ensuite ils rentraient chez eux à cheval. Donc il fallait les héberger quelque part, ils ne pouvaient pas tout faire en une seule journée. Donc j'ai posé la question, pourquoi au lieu de se taper une journée à cheval, ils ne construisaient pas simplement une église près de chez eux, ça leur ferait gagner du temps. Et en fait il faut bien s'imaginer que la vie ici en Suède au XVIIIe siècle, c'était extrêmement extrêmement rude. Il y a dix mois d'hiver, L'hiver est extrêmement froid, il fait moins 30 degrés, il n'y a pas du tout de soleil et, et c'est très très difficile de faire pousser quoi que ce soit. L'agriculture est quasiment impossible. Donc ils, on survivait à peine. Ils passaient tout leur temps dans les champs, ils arrivaient à peine à, à récolter de quoi survivre. Et ils passaient l'hiver, ils n'avaient pas le temps en fait de, de ça, ils ne s'amusaient pas à construire des églises. Donc ils construisaient une église comme ça pour des centaines de kilomètres carrés et ils faisaient le déplacement à pied. Ouais, je crois qu'on a du mal à s'imaginer de nos jours euh, le genre de vie qu'ils pouvaient vivre à l'époque. Ici non plus, pas de barrière, pas de haie, pas de délimitation. Ah oui, on a refait les courses tout à l'heure, encore aller au petit supermarché faire deux trois courses. Et cette fois, je me suis comporté en vrai suédois, c'est-à-dire que j'ai bien aligné proprement les articles sur le tapis roulant les uns à la suite des autres avec le, le, le code barre orienté du bon côté. Et Oscar, du coup, était beaucoup plus relaxé. Je lui ai dit, est-ce que, est que j'ai fait mieux cette fois Il m'a fait, ah ouais, t'as été un bon Suédois, c'est bien. T'as bien fait les choses comme il faut. So we just woke up, it's breakfast time. And my best new friend is already here. Asking for hugs. <rire> Annika a la gentillesse de se sacrifier et de garder les trois filles pendant deux jours. Pendant qu'on part à la découverte du Sud. Enfin, un peu moins dans le nord, quoi. Quatre heures de route nous attendent, à travers la forêt et les lacs, jusqu'à Anschelsvik, sur la route transsuédoise qui traverse le pays du Danemark à la Finlande, en longeant la côte Est. Plus on s'enfonce à l'ouest, en direction de la Norvège, et plus c'est sauvage. Bien qu'on y ait trouvé des traces d'activité humaine remontant à l'âge du bronze, Anschelsvik, qu'on appelle volontiers Evik, est relativement jeune. Elle n'a été fondée qu'en 1842 en tant que Shopping, une ville de marché, et a obtenu son statut de cité en 1894. Comptant 33 000 habitants, c'est une ville industrielle, grosse exportatrice de papier et pionnière dans les biocarburants. La ville est située sur un plateau qui, libéré du poids de plusieurs kilomètres de glace il y a environ 8 000 ans, s'est peu à peu soulevé de 300 mètres et continue encore aujourd'hui. Le sol rocheux est râpé par les glaciers qui régnaient ici à l'époque.
Så var ska vi gå nu då? Eh, och det är gula leden, 6 km än sammanlagt. Uh -huh. Nu ska vi se. La lumière du jour, toujours présente, rend très pratique l'organisation de randonnées, qui peuvent débuter à n'importe quelle heure. En l'occurrence, nous nous mettons en marche à 19h. Ok, so we're now hiking in a, in a proper troll forest. Except we won't, we won't find any trolls because it's daylight. Yeah, so we have to come back in the winter. En se soulevant, le plateau a fini par sortir de la mer. La pluie a peu à peu lavé les alluvions, le sable et le mortier de roches tendres, ne laissant plus à nu que ces rochers arrondis par le temps, formant de grands pierriers localisés. Certains arbres portent un panneau demandant de ne pas toucher ces vénérables, âgés de plus de 300 ans. Leur gabarit rachitique laisse deviner la rudesse du climat. Il est temps de rentrer pour un petit fika. Le petit déjeuner se compose généralement d'ingrédients salés qu'on dispose sur un pain suédois, puis qu'on enroule, mais aussi de curiosités sucrées, comme cette confiture de baies artie. Ces baies sont rares et chères, car elles se cultivent très mal et ne poussent naturellement que dans des marécages infestés de moustiques. Notre prochaine visite, le parc national de Skullesgogen. Très vite, on tombe à nouveau sur un de ces pierriers façonnés par la mer et la pluie. Le plus surprenant, je crois, c'est la façon dont il commence et se termine subitement. Depuis une hauteur, la Suède nous offre un de ces paysages grandioses dont elle a le secret. Le parc accueille une curiosité géologique, une énorme faille à ciel ouvert, apparemment unique en son genre en Suède. On y trouve aussi de vieilles maisons, pas toutes abandonnées, ainsi que des refuges. En tant que non-suédois, il est surprenant de constater que le refuge est entièrement meublé et équipé, et demeure apparemment ainsi, sans signe de dégradation ou de vol. So it's funny, like you're walking in a pretty dense forest, and suddenly, out of the forest, uh, there's a sea, and that's the Northern Sea. And I want to touch the Northern Sea <laughs> if I don't die before I reach it. Ta -da! Quand on parle de distance, on utilise volontiers le mile suédois, qui équivaut à 10 km. On ne dit jamais « je vais conduire 350 km », on dit « je vais conduire 35 miles ». À perte de vue, des forêts, des steppes ou des lacs, avec de temps à autre quelques maisons perdues, et pourtant le plus souvent équipées d'internet au débit, voire de la fibre et parfois même, de loin en loin, une voiture. Dans ces étendues sauvages, il n'est pas rare, surtout pendant les longues nuits d'hiver, de tomber sur des élans qui traversent les routes. Vu la taille des bestiaux, la plupart des voitures sont équipées d'énormes feux de route additionnels. Yeah. <laughs> 
Meeting a young priest is fairly uncommon. I mean, every priest I know is, is an old man, so I'm very happy to meet a young one, let alone a woman priest. So how do you say priestess? Priestess? No, priest. Priest? priest. priest. We, say we say in Sweden we just say priest. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a word in English for female priest? We say, we have a word for that. We don't, we don't use priest, that's just priest. Yeah, yeah just priest, priest well. So, so let alone, so that's two young priests, let alone two married priests, and let alone a pregnant priest. I want to show my stomach. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I don't see it here. Yeah. It's so dark. So, so this, this for me, for me this is just unheard of, yeah. right? This is just unheard of. Yeah. And I, I'm very proud to introduce mm -hmm. them to you. So. What would you have to say about you know? So you're you're Lutheran, yeah, Lutheran priest. Okay, yeah. both okay, both the changes. And I'm I'm curious about how you you came to that, how you decided to be priest. What's your what would you have to say about that? ladies first? Uh, we like to talk. When we have time. we have five children minutes. Okay, yeah. five children minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm born in a Christian family, mm -hmm. so uh, I believed in Jesus like mm -hmm. almost my whole life. I had a uh, like. A period in my teenagers in teenage time I mm -hmm. was like questioning everything and was like no I don't know I I had like this I didn't like God uh, I, I, sometimes yeah. I said oh I hate God but you know yeah. if, if you if you, you hate some you yeah, questioning questioning God, you yeah. it but if you if you if you question something and you say you don't like someone yeah. you have to believe in it so I, I always believed in God but don't, I have not oh, had a good, good relationship with God. From when I was like 16 years, I was saying to my mom, Oh mom, I want to study theology because I love the Bible. I was reading mm -hmm. the Bible all the time. So then I went to Bible school and there I met, uh, uh, it was so good because there I met so, so many Christians. Yeah. Because in Sweden, so many we don't. We are not so many Christians. Yeah, yeah, that's what told me. It's so, a fairly atheist country. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, or agnostic. I agnostic, think yeah, most agnostic, of the people agnostic, are agnostic. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's actually a school. You went to a, yeah, a we priest went to, school. Yeah, we went, went to a university, but they have also um, priest things also. <laughs> okay. So priest courses. And I was uh, writing a, on a small essay. In the end of the essay, I was supposed to answer uh, about what I was thinking about myself as a priest. Uh, and I was like, what? Yeah. I never thought that for be like yeah. before. And you have to be sure you want to do that. God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to become a priest or what, what should I do? And then I decided to, okay, uh, if God wants me to become a, a priest, uh, he will ensure that uh, I will get an okay from the Church of Sweden. It's a, like a long process, it takes one year. How did you get the answer? Because you asked God, do you want me to be a priest? Yeah, I I said, if, if, you, if, if I get through this and it's a, I get an okay from the bishop and from the, the council who was uh, yeah. taking the decision. So that means it's a yes. Yeah, then, oh. then, I'll, then I think, then I believe you, then I will follow your path oh, yeah. and go at, to become a priest. Uh, the bishop, he was like saying, hi Rebecca. I'm like, oh no, this is negative. I'm like, you, you get a green light, yeah. you get a co okay. I'm like, what? And that's your answer. Are you for real? Yeah. And that's feeling. Like, I was mm -hmm. so full of joy and peace. Uh, and just that moment, I know that this is right. Yeah. Because uh, before, yeah. I was just struggling so much and I felt mm -hmm. not in peace. Yeah. Uh, Which that, is natural. Yeah. It's only natural. Yeah, it's natural. Half uh, year. And uh, for one year, I was ordained as a pastor, uh, as a priest in the Church of Sweden. Uh, from from the birth to the death, as a as a priest, you can do. You you walk with people, you, you baptize them, and then you bury them, you marry them, you do everything. What about you? Yeah, for me, I've been uh, a Christian my whole life. My parents are Christian, so mm -hmm. so it has been very natural. Yeah. And I've always had a, a very good relationship oh, yeah. with, with God. Did you doubt? As she did. Sorry? She, because she said when she was a teenager, she had yeah. a lot of doubt. Yeah. She rejected God. Yeah. Did you do that? No. Never? Never. Never doubt? Never. Wow. And I've always spent lots of time in the church. And as a layman, I've had a lot of different tasks. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I became a teenager,
stay here that's in Greece, so I was in church maybe four times a week in, in different play, doing different stuff and mm -hmm. uh, being a leader for for children, for youth. Mm -hmm. You kind of always knew this is what I want to do. No, this is what I want. No? no, no. I just thought it's very. I I enjoy this. I enjoy uh, uh, spending time in church. I enjoy yeah. uh, talking with faith with the different people and I enjoy having fun with people around me here. But but I always had the the thought for myself that I will I will not work in church. I will only go there uh, as a layman in yeah. free, free okay. time. Yeah. Uh, so I will work with something regular and then I will, I will spend a lot of time in church. Then I started university and had decided I will become an engineer. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I had very nice classmates and I, I liked the subject. Mm -hmm. But immediately I thought that I didn't have, have peace inside of me when I was in, in the education. Yeah, it something felt like was missing. Something was yeah, missing. I yeah, felt that, oh yeah, all right, I think God wants something else. Yeah. So I only only started for for maybe one and a half month, mm -hmm. and then I, I realized this isn't what God wants, and I uh, applied to the university for theological studies, and I felt a huge peace inside of me. Um, yeah, this is the place God has put me in, but I still didn't know should I become a priest, a pastor, or something like that. So for two and a half years in the education, that was the description. I think God wants me to be a priest, a pastor, or something like that. And then I, I found peace in the place that, yeah, I should become a, a priest in the Church of Sweden. I work as a priest, and I think God has put me in the place where I am now, but I'm not sure what he has ahead still. Yeah, stupid question maybe. <coughs> Would you like to go higher, like become a bishop or something? Or? Not a bishop, probably. So it's not your goal, it's not your goal to... Our, our goal is to, to, you know, I'm from Ethiopia, yeah. so the church there, the Lutheran church, is growing a lot. A lot of people come to faith, uh, so they have a lack of teachers and evangelists and pastors. So uh, our vision and uh, our hope is to go to Ethiopia yeah. and to maybe Samuel can teach at the university yeah. okay. and uh, aid, aid. Yeah, this is aid in the church. About getting married, I think this is a really good thing that you can get married yeah. because, as I said, I, I only know old priests, old men Boy. priests. I, come from, I never seen a woman priest. No. I, I, I believe these are just Christian priests, and they cannot get married. They cannot. Yeah. They, they cannot. They have to remain single. So they make they make a celibacy vow. Yeah. So it, it's hard. I mean. It's, it's hard to not not get married, not know a woman like like you do. So I think this is the reason why I only know old priests because mm -hmm. young people mm -hmm. do not want this life. Maybe they would want this life. They would want to be priests. Yeah, but not but they also person. would like to get married and have a baby yeah. and have a family. Yeah. Yeah. In Sweden, it's uh, it's been allowed for five hundred years for for priests to be married. Yeah. So we are used to it. But but if if you are not allowed to become married when you are deciding to become a priest, then it's a much bigger step. Yes, exactly. Uh, That's my point. When we are two, it's, we, I feel that we are much stronger because then we can search him together. Lord, what do you want? We have, we have both said we want to follow you and give our whole lives to you. Mm. Uh, lead us and help us so that we can, can spread your word and, and become a family that will witness about you. Uh, so it's a huge strength. Yes, yeah. 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 I'm into that. <laughs> I was a sermon. Yeah, a nice very short sermon. Oh, it's Thank nice. you. Yeah, because we're running out of yeah, time. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, <laughs> La Suède est décidément un pays bien surprenant. Et juste quand on pense qu'elle a épuisé son stock de surprises. Carme assourdissant, l'eau de fonte des glaciers se déverse depuis les contrées lointaines du nord. Les rapides de Stolforsen sont les plus grandes de Scandinavie. Sur 5 km, elles descendent de 82 mètres. Les 600 derniers mètres sont les plus raides, car ils comptent à eux seuls 50 mètres de chute. 
à son maximum, comme en ce moment, la rivière Pitié débite 850 mètres cubes par seconde. This river over here, yeah. around timber on it. Yeah. So But it floated, it floated the uh, logs. Yeah. Yeah. But it, because it was too wide, yeah. they closed it off with this, those kind of things. Yeah. Three yeah. Months. Okay. This is the original one from the 18th, uh, 19th century. Okay. Yeah. Then when they, when they built forest roads to start, they restored it to how it usually was. Okay. So for a couple of, for a hundred years, it was really smaller and deeper. This is how it used to look, with no human... It was trained before. Yeah, it was trained. They changed it. Yeah, they changed it. And then they restored it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then they just released it yeah. as it was before. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. En hiver, les canaux et piscines naturelles qui bordent la rivière gèlent. Quand il fait vraiment très froid, les rapides elles-mêmes gèlent. Pas en surface, mais au fond. De la glace se forme sous la surface jusqu'à former des barrages qui forcent l'eau en dehors du lit. Elle inonde alors la forêt, puis gèle, empêchant les animaux de trouver de la nourriture. Que faire avec ces eaux glacées S'y baigner, bien sûr Mais même les vrais Suédois savent ne pas s'y frotter trop longtemps. Oscar m'avoura hors champ qu'il avait les membres engourdis et avait perdu la sensibilité aux extrémités. <rire> Le sol rocheux est parsemé de marmites, ces trous creusés par un rocher brassé par la rivière. Et bien sûr, après tout ça, rien ne vaut un petit fika. En Suède, trois fois par jour, quoi que vous faites, où vous êtes, vous devez arrêter. And have fika. Coffee, yeah. sweets, Coffee, ice sweets, ice cream, cake. Ice cream. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Juste avant de devoir filer à l'aéroport, on trouve encore le temps de caser une petite visite dans un village voisin, dans lequel de vieux bâtiments et équipements sont maintenus en état. Yeah. Okay, it's an old man. Yeah, it's an old man. Everything is genuine. Yeah. You can tell something is old because the doors are so small. Look at that. Oh. L'ancêtre d'une machine à laver. That's a pump, right? Yeah. It's a fire hose. Fire pump. That's a fire pump. Yeah. What does it say? No, it's like a it's a like a story from the village there was like once there was a, a fire here in the mill house mm -hmm. and uh, they needed to get one of those it was two kilometers away <gasps> so okay. the people ran there the man of the village and yeah. when they got there the miller wouldn't release it until they had coffee because it was lonely it was like yeah you need to I need to see some people <laughs> and it led the, the fire yeah it was like yeah just get it out for it just catch some pika <laughs> <laughs> it's a plane it's a log plane So long yeah. They always did this. Even in, with, in, even in video games. Yeah. What is that? A log okay. planer where... You, put, you know how you plane wood? Yeah. My yeah. This is a mechanical one. Yeah. This, this one yeah. goes around, yeah. this turns on this thing, and it goes under here. There's like a... There's plates. There's plates here. So you put the log in and it goes... It goes... Oh, whoa. Yeah. What is it? What is it? It's like something to be brain into and breaks all up. Does it split grain? Yeah, it split grains. Yeah. Oh. More old stuff. Toute une petite Syrie, modernisée au début du XXe siècle avec un moteur à combustion, parfaitement entretenu et fonctionnel. Okay, so this. Yeah. It's where you do reindeer cheese. Reindeer cheese? Yeah, you stuff a reindeer in it. Okay. And you turn. Okay. And you have to find a cheese. <laughs> no. A cheese can't no, come. This is for clay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So clay? 
put sand, you put sediment into it, you mix it around and you make bricks. Thank you for destroying our Swedish clay. No, yeah, they're all shattered. Yeah, so you need more. They just make more. <laughs> Where's that? Oh, this is how you burn it. Oh, you cook the bricks? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dry them first, you burn them down there. Brick oven. Yeah. When you had wooden roofs, you had to waterproof it like something, right? When you have what? When so? you have wooden roofs, yeah. you have to waterproof Yeah, sure. Like a black tar. Yep. This is how you made it. You put wood from the other side, like wood you couldn't use for anything else. You put it inside uh, on the hill, you covered it with moss and everything, yeah. you put it on fire. So you burn the other side, so the heat travels down, yeah. presses the tar out of the wood, and it comes out here. This is like a annoying process, it takes forever. Something else, what is that? We're making coal. You pile everything together, you burn it down, you get uh, like coal for furnaces. Oh. Yeah. Or manufacturing yeah, burning, the coal. Yeah, this is like the wood you can't use, right? So we have too much wood. Yeah. So they put it pile together, they burn it, it becomes coal. <laughs> so now. So they also knew how to relax. Yeah, of course. Back in the days. Yeah. You kill yourself if you didn't. Come for it. This is the shit. <laughs> so this is like like a sass or something. Oh, this is a waiting room. You go out and cool, cool down, you come inside, because this is hot. Oh, yeah, right. So this is the, the actual sauna. Is the sauna yeah. Okay, that's the actual sauna. You don't have those sauna? Uh, yeah, but not that old. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, okay. You can do this in the fall or in the spring. When yeah. it's cold outside, yeah. heat this up, run into the water, yeah. run back. Yeah. You can do winter too. But we do that every year. Yeah, I know, I know. It's refreshing. Surprise. Smithy. Smith. Smith. Smith? Oh, Forge. Oh, Forge. No oh. Forge. Oh. Bellows. Oh, what? You push it air. Go like this? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Even more stuff. This is like, they, they kept, this is like an exhibit, ex ex exhibition yeah. of how they lived like 150 years ago. So if you go in here, you can see what this is. This is a, uh, this is like a grain barn. Grain barn? Oh, and a barn. You have animals here, you have everything. Uh -huh. you Pig pen? What? Pig pen. Pigs. Oh, pigs. Yeah, pigs, pigs. or chickens. Les animaux avaient aussi droit à leur chauffage, histoire de ne pas mourir de froid. You see that this roof is a lot higher than this roof? Yes. Because, the, yeah, because of heating. This was just a shed. So they, they built it like this, but they were here, like, have to keep the heat. Built a lot lower. That's why everything is so small. Je filme à la va-vite ce puits à balancier, un peu dépassé par la cadence des choses à voir qui s'enchaînent. Uh, yeah, the same kind of thing my parents has. It's a baking. Oh, it's a bakery. You have the same kind of thing here, the newspapers. Oh. <laughs> Mussolini wants uh, French land. 1938. Yeah. Uh, we need to prepare for the battle of 1941, 1942. Children beds or people beds? Both. Both. You probably have like four of those. <gasps> okay. And you can like close them up. Want the privacy. Oh. That was the only way to get privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This kind of couch bed. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere in every old home. Bridesmaids luggage. Mm -hmm. Because when you were married off, put all your things in that. All your stuff in there. And then you went to the your husband. This 
is a milk cabin. You got warm milk from the cows, mm -hmm. right? You put them in here. This is against the cold. This was supposed to be against the cold wall. Oh. So it cools and you get the cream at the top. Oh, so like you a, scraped it off the cream. It's a natural refrigerator. Yeah. American. Oh, an American car. Yeah, we imported them in the 19th century. This is old. Looks old. It's from 1748. I'm still in the hall, yeah. I don't have a translation for this, because this is over here. It's called, it's called a habre. It's built on this. It's always lifted. Yeah, to avoid rotting. Yeah. The grain was up here. Yeah. So, no rats or nothing. Everything up here. And you had one of those here. So, no way for the rats to come up. Oh, a ladder. Yeah, there's only ladders, no stairs or nothing, because yeah. they can jump it. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello! <laughs> hello, pigs! J'ai pas eu la chance d'y assister, mais voici une des croix d'été, autour desquelles les Suédois dansent sur des chants folkloriques pour fêter le Midsommar, ou au milieu de l'été. Bizarrement, personne ne sait vraiment d'où vient cette récente tradition. Avant de m'en aller, il me reste tout de même une chose à faire mon baptême de vrai Suédois en sautant dans l'eau froide. Is it cold? But was it worth it, Jeremy? Yes. But now I'm like, I'm half sweet. <laughs> People pay good money for that. <laughs> S'il y a bien une chose que la Suède vous apprend, c'est qu'elle n'est pas à court de surprises. Avec tout ça, j'ai plus le choix. Il va falloir que je revienne en hiver. <rire>